and welcome back. Uh, this morning I would like to talk to you a little bit about the symptoms of RAD. I became increasingly aware that there's a lot of people watching that are just learning about RAD and that's wonderful. I'm so glad you're taking the time to watch these videos. Uh, but there may be some things that are difficult to understand. I know there's a lot of videos out there that talk about the symptoms of RAD, but they're so clinical, it's a little hard to understand. My daughter's advanced directive. And I don't know uh, how many of you have made an advanced directive or know what that is. It's very handy to have to hand to your school, uh, maybe to the local police department, to your hospital, uh, your doctor's office, and it just gives uh, basic information and history on your child and goes through their symptoms and what their diagnoses are and who to contact, uh, including your therapist, your uh, parenting coach if you have one. Um, I've named absolutely everyone. and. Actually, if you have any questions about how to make an advanced directive, if you contact Kayleen Henderson, uh, you can find her on Facebook through uh, Carousel Project, uh, and I will leave the link down below. She is the one who helped me with my advanced directive. She's very knowledgeable, very, uh, very, just a good person to really lean on and, and ask. You can ask her anything. I will leave her link down below. Uh, she did give me her permission to do that, and so I just want to say thank you, Kayleen. So anyway, on in my advanced directive, I have uh, a little bit, a couple of pages of uh, things that I've printed off the internet of what reactive attachment disorder is. Let's just get right to the symptoms and what that might look like for some for an outside person who's not living in the same home with that rad child. They are superficially engaging and charming. And I cannot express that, especially the word charming. They are the sweetest. They are the kids that you will see at a church function or a school function that are just so thoughtful and so polite and just so loving and welcoming to you and most people will say they are just the sweetest um yes they are very superficially charming and always smiling at you and always ready for a hug or, or give you a compliment or even ask you how you're doing well they have a, an agenda. They have a reason that they're doing that. And if they want to see, they're testing you to see how open you are to be triangulated. Normal children are not that open to strangers and they shouldn't be because that's a dangerous thing these days. We need to really kind of step back and say, why are they being so um, engaging? Lack of eye contact on parents' terms. My daughter is 16 and I am constantly saying, I'm right here to redirect her because she wants to look somewhere else while we're talking. And the reason being is because when you are looking into someone's eyes, you, it's a very intimate. She will look me directly in the eyes when she's lying. And that's a good indicator for me. If she's looking me directly in the eyes, then it's probably not the truth. And I kind of hate to say that, but it's true. And this is what I've learned. Uh, and I'm sure a lot of other rad parents would agree with that. Um, on that note, just real quick, if there are other rad parents watching and I have forgotten anything or didn't explain something well, you are just as educated as I am uh, on this subject. So please leave your comments below if I've forgotten anything or if I didn't explain it well enough or you have anything to add or if you just even disagree with me. But please feel free to leave your comments because that helps anyone else who's watching the videos. It gives them a better understanding. It's not just me saying it, it's you saying it and it's the next rad mom saying it. Indiscriminately affectionate with strangers. 
and we kind of talked about that with the superficially engaging, engaging and charming. If a child is being uh, overly affectionate with strangers and willing to sit in a stranger's lap or go and hug a stranger or, or walk all away with a stranger, that is definitely a dangerous situation. And we are trying to teach our children not to do that. So please, if you are not a rad parent, don't encourage that. Um, we want help. We need your help in teaching our children, especially when they're young. Now, my daughter's 16 now, but when it's a young rad child and they are uh, very open to walking away with a stranger, that's very scary. So please do not encourage that. If you see, if you know a rad family and that child is being overly affectionate or wandering, please help the parent uh, by enforcing that they need to stay with their parents and not be wandering off. You're not going to hurt that child by just telling them that's not appropriate. We are, we, sometimes it takes a village. Not affectionate on parents' terms and yeah. If you're a rad parent, you know exactly. Um, when they want love, they want it on their terms. Um, when they want it. If they are not in the mood for hugging or cuddling or anything like that, they make it very clear. And sometimes um, they will use their bodily parts or bodily functions, I should say, to assure that you will not get close enough to them. And I won't go into details. You can use your imagination. Destructive to self and others and material things and accident prone. We've had to tear out carpets in our house uh, because of urine. Things accidentally get broken a lot and they are very destructive and a lot of times um, they will bite themselves, pull their own hair out, scratch the face, um, cutting, you name it, um, st food issues, starving themselves or eating things that are not edible. And, uh, it, and if they do have injuries and someone asks, let's say at school or at church, guess who's going to get the blame? <laughs> it's usually the mom, the mom figure. It's just a, a, a frosting on the cake for them. They got attention and they got to blame mom for something she didn't do. Cruelty to animals. Yes. Um, I don't think that that really needs a lot of explanation, but that cruelty or death to animals is on the list. Lying about the obvious and this is called crazy lying and it's called crazy lying because it's so it, you just you just stand there with your mouth open dumbfounded that someone would lie about something so obvious. They will lie to the death of that and stick to that lie. Um, crazy, crazy lying, stealing, no impulse control and they're frequently act hyperactive, learning lags. And not all kids are going to have every symptom. Um, and it may look different outside people. A lot of times, if you're not a parent of that child living in the same home, you may not recognize a learning lag. And even teachers, um, my daughter scores very highly uh, in, in any tests that she has done in school and she's, she's always scored very highly. A lot of the learning lags are kind of more in the common sense um, area. I personally feel for her that it's uh, connected to her emotional age. The learning lags are, they could either be evident to everyone or just small things that only the parents might notice. Lack of cause and effect thinking. Uh, if I do this, this is likely the outcome or consequence, whether that be good or bad. It may cross their mind briefly. I might get a consequence, but that's later, not now. Um, and I really didn't understand that. Uh, my daughter and I have had lots of talks and like I said, she's 16 now and She's able to explain these things a little better because we've talked about that. And I do feel that she does think about what a consequence might be, whether it be good or bad. Um, 
and just kind of goes with the moment and that and that's what she says it just depends on how she feels at that moment and whether if it's a negative consequence uh, it just depends on how bad that consequence is or in it, it may be if she wants what she wants in that moment that consequence might not matter a lack of conscience yes that's on the list there is such a, a disconnect of other people are real with feelings and thoughts just like them um, I remember when I was little very very young I remember the moment that it dawned on me that other people have feelings just like me and if they get hurt it hurts just like it hurts me and they have thoughts in their own mind just like I did I remember discovering that or or coming to that realization I think that uh, these kids have not came to that realization quite yet that um, and, and I could be wrong about that. It's just my way of explaining the lack of conscience. Abnormal eating patterns. Um, yes, very much so. That can look anywhere from overeating, eating things that are not supposed to be eaten, or uh, eating disorders, starving themselves, or restricting their eating. Um, a lot of times that's because of love uh, mama feeds you mama takes care of that need it's not just a want it's a need and they don't want to have to rely on anyone and uh, that food is is uh, in a relation with love so uh, you may notice if you're a rad mom you tell that child that sandwich I put all my love into that sandwich they won't eat it poor peer relation they may have friends and they may be able to uh, keep a superficial relationship with someone but they're generally not going to have close friends and they're usually not someone the same age as them uh, when she was in the um, I don't know fifth grade or so she would want to sit up in the very front of the bus with the kindergartners and the first graders and that may have been a control thing because those younger kids are easier to control. Um, and I'm not saying that just for her, but you know, with with rad children in general, they they may like the younger children because they're easier to control. But that's generally what you're going to be looking at. They like either very uh, younger children or sometimes older, and they want to be involved in the adult conversation and be in, in, involved in what the adults are doing as if they are a peer to the those adults. Preoccupation with fire, and uh, the next one is preoccupation with blood and gore. So fire, blood, and gore, if they begin watching movies about this stuff, that will just increase. Uh, that would go along with the cruelty and death to animals. Persistent nonsense questions and chatter. Oh my goodness. Uh, when my daughter was young, um, she doesn't do it as much now and there's a couple of different reasons why they'll do that. Uh, first of all, whoever is asking the question is in charge. Um, that is how it is in their mind at least. So they're constantly asking you questions, even if they know the answer already. They they feel in control of you by making you answer or um, the nonstop talking. Uh, a, a lot of times, even if they're very young, they may speak uh, in babble and even not even in actual words, but just noise making. And that's kind of their very young way of drowning out those thoughts in their mind. Actually, even talking about this now, I'm remembering when my daughter was young, she would whisper a lot. She may talk, start out by talking like this, but then that would start to kind of whisper. And you would have to say, what? And she enjoyed that. Um, it's... Uh, 
It's what we would call a head game. Inappropriately demanding and clingy. What that might look like is if you are talking to someone and all of a sudden they need your attention right now. Clingy in on their terms, not yours. If you feel like, let's watch a movie and cuddle. Um, they may not want to do that, but if they want to, but there's a time and a place for everything, and it seems like they would pick uh, inappropriate times, it would be uncomfortable for you, and that's how they wanted it to be. They wanted it to be uncomfortable for you. Abnormal speech patterns, and I kind of talked about that a little bit already. Uh, mumbling, whispering, um, trailing off or using words that are not actual words but just made up noises. Um, those are control tactics and uh, attention. It's, it's for attention and control. They want to make you repeat yourself um, and they may even ask you what repeatedly when they heard you. If you were giving instructions for something uh, I know I had to tell my daughter, uh, and it took me quite a while to learn this, to be honest, because um, it's not in the forefront of your mind to, to think. Uh, if someone says, what, you just naturally repeat yourself because they didn't hear you. But these kids didn't, don't necessarily not hear you. They just want to make you repeat yourself. I just had to learn to say, if you didn't hear me the first time, then that's your, your tough luck triangulation of adults and I have talked about that in other videos um, that is probably at the top of their list the manipulation and control games to triangulate adults false allegations of abuse <clears throat> yeah uh, they may have bit themselves or scratched themselves um, and blamed it on you that might also mean uh, sexual abuse or molestation. Not all rad kids are going to confess later. My daughter just happens to be one that does confess. I made it up. I think it's more of the attention. She wants you to know she made it up because she wants the, the credit for it. Uh, presumptive entitlement issues. And that is, uh, where you're going to see the narcissist come out in them they are very entitled they are they feel that they are they feel my daughter has told me multiple times and tried to talk to me as if i were her peer or she was above me they are not equal with the adults the adults are in charge and they do not feel that anyone should be in charge over them the last symptom on the list is parents appear hostile and angry. <laughs> yeah, you, you don't know the things that the parents are going through at home with that child. Uh, usually outside people are seeing the very charming person, the very charming, loving child. So they don't know how that child is at home and they don't know the strange little head games that are being played on the parents. They are seeing that superficially charming child. They are not seeing, or they may be seeing a victim. Usually the parent that you see is so frazzled. Uh, I used to <laughs> have a picture on my cell phone of a little cartoon drawing of a blonde mom with her hair all sticking out everywhere and she's got this you know, crazy look on her face and she's pulling her hair. And that was me. I, I was, no one believed me. Still, there's still people out there who don't believe me. And I just looked so angry and I was angry. I was angry that people would think that I would lie or make these things up about a child. I, and, and I wouldn't do that. But that's what these children want you to think. So anyway, these are the symptoms. Like I said, I know that there's some people watching who have never heard of RAD before, who don't know anything about it and are just learning. So these are things that are common symptoms in RAD children that I've listed. And 
Um, not all children have all of these symptoms. My daughter just happens to have all of them. Uh, anyway, I hope this video is helpful. I hope it helps you understand. I hope it opens your eyes a little bit more and educates you just that little bit more. So hope you guys have a great day and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye-bye.